Well, thank you. It's wonderful to look out here, and both Joanne and I want to say just how thrilled and how honored you all, we all are, for having you join us here tonight. Uh, it's been a perfect day. The sky is Carolina blue. We are here in the Bayou State of Louisiana, in the Crescent City of New Orleans, home of the New, or New Orleans Saints. And I just want to say what a warm place we have in our heart for the Indianapolis Colts. You know, our lives are like tapestries. Our tapestries depict where we were born. They depict our families. They depict where we grew up. They depict where we went to school, who our teachers were, who our professors were who our professors were, who our friends were, who loves us, and who we love. Joanne and I have a wonderful tapestry. Our tapestry includes images of when our children were born, when they were toddlers, when they went to kindergarten, when they went to grade school, when they went to college. And now there are images of them as wonderful adults that Joanne and I are just so proud of. The Hendricksons also have a wonderful tapestry. The Hendrickson women, the girls, have married wonderful men, so they're beautiful women, wonderful husbands. The grandchildren are just spectacular. And then there's Paul. All of you have tapestries, and I don't know the images of all of your tapestries, but I do know that they include images of your friendship with Paul and with Jocelyn, and they make your tapestries all the more special. We're gathered here tonight to see Jocelyn and Paul start a new tapestry, and their tapestry will be all the more vibrant, all the more colorful, all the more resilient and all the, all the more durable because of your friendship. You are charter members of their tapestry. So I'd like to offer a toast to all of you for your friendship for Jocelyn and Paul. And you are helping to start what I call Jocelyn and Paul's Bayou Tapestry. <laughs> Ryan, your turn. Is there a good mic, a hot mic, or uh, anything like this? Uh, anywho, how's that? Uh, good. Paul did not tell me about uh, having to back up a second line parade in New Orleans, so this is a disappointment. But uh, give you a quick introduction. Uh, Paul and I uh, met each other about 30 years ago. We were kids. We grew up together in the same town. And uh, while we went to uh, high school together and played baseball together, um, the thing that him and I have in common is that I was there the first week that Paul met Jocelyn. And I'll get into that story. Um, but why we've always circled back is that Paul and I went to Ball State together at school. Paul went there for TCOM, media. He was really enthused in that. I went to Ball State because my sister was a senior, and she would buy me alcohol. So <laughs> we circled back, and we uh, hung out as we hung out as college guys, and uh, I did my thing in Detroit. And about a year out, uh, I circled back to South Bend, where Paul and I still work together. And during that time, there was a two-week snapshot. And wherever Katie is, somewhere, yeah. she was the other only witness to these two weeks of pure madness. Um, so basically, my now wife, Nicole, uh, had to go out of town for two weeks. And Paul and I would go to bars and whatnot, and I get a phone call. He randomly ran into Jocelyn at a local watering hole. And I get a phone call the next night, where it's kind of like, hey, where are you going? And he's like, hey, listen, man, I know Nicole's out of town. I know you have nothing to do. <laughs> and if I buy your drinks, will you come out with me so I can randomly run into Jocelyn and her six or seven friends? <laughs> so we would do that. And I was like, oh, that's a good story. I went out the first night. Wasted 
all my good material on all of Jocelyn's friends. Why Paul peppered into his, uh, you know, thing to Jocelyn and everything like that. I was on the peripheral. I was playing zone. <laughs> and as Katie can attest, the second night, I had no stories left. I was the guy, I was your friend that came home from school during the summer. You started it in August. And I was that friend that was, I went to summer camp. I made out with a girl. Everything I told Katie, I think she thought I didn't have a girlfriend or a wife or anything of this nature. I just made up stuff about Nicole so Paul and Jocelyn could talk to each other. So we would do that day in, day out. It was probably good. On the sixth or seventh night, it was the same time as this. March Madness was going on. And we go to this other bar. It was called Main Street. I haven't talked to Jocelyn that much. I don't know that much about her. I just know from Paul and everything like that. And we walk in. And if there's something that you know about Paul, he has wardrobe choices, which are Sunday's best. You look fantastic. Uh, casual wear, jeans going out and whatnot. Uh, work. And then the whole entire part of his closet is NBA apparel. <laughs> Foot Locker, everything of this. Since, I mean, we used to do parties back up all say that was called Put a Jersey On, simply because we love wearing jerseys so much. So we walk into this bar, and I'm looking around, and there's Jocelyn fixated on a television because UNC is playing, and then the crowd parts, and she's wearing a jersey. I was like, oh my God, I don't know anything about this woman, but I think this is going to work. And that was, <laughs> it, was felt, it was a Felton jersey. Um, and I loved it, man, and, that, and it was perfect. And those two weeks were fun. You moved heaven and earth to make sure that you were always around Jocelyn. Getting to know Jocelyn all the time in South Bend, Daphne and everything like that. Nothing's better than seeing you guys happy. And tonight is the best night ever, seeing you guys smile and everything like that. But I will always remember that night where I was like, this is where it all begins. And to come to this night is awesome. So if we could all raise a glass, yeah. cheers, yeah. love, and happiness, man. And if Stephanie could come up, please. Hi, I've, I've wanted to start off by welcoming you all here. Um, as someone who's called New Orleans my home for the last six years, I feel a special need to welcome you. Um, I hope you have fun, that you enjoy all of our city has to offer, um, and that you party not only today, but you continue to enjoy um, all of the hours that you have here. Um, I actually have two separate toasts. Um, the first thing I would like to do is just honor um, a few people who are absolutely partying tonight, just not partying here with us. Um, and that would be my grandparents on both sides, um, Alice, Grammy, and Herman, um, Pop and Grammy Bernie, Auntie Carol, Auntie Glor, um, and Mark Richmond. I know, and I say that not, not with sadness, but knowing that somewhere in the universe, those people are partying harder, that we are here. If they could be here with us, they would have been here long before we got here. They would be long after we got here, and they would be in the back motioning, can you just cut, because we need to get to the dancing. Um, so cheers first to those people. Yeah. Um, and then um, also just to welcome Paul to my family. We've enjoyed having you with us for the last 10 or so years. Um, to complete Jocelyn, you guys, make each other whole with the adventures that you're on, with being level-headed at the right times. Um, also, I, I would like to say that Jocelyn never does anything without making sure it is the right moment and it is the right thing. Um, when I was a kid, she would keep her chocolates on the shelf in her room and wouldn't eat them until it was the perfect time, which was really hard for me because I sneeze when I eat chocolate, so she would always know um, if I was in her room stealing her things. For years and years, um, she would keep the same ones there. I don't know any other child that does that but Jocelyn. When she was picking out Daphne, she went to just about every shelter in Indiana um, to find the right pup. Um, not to compare you, but I know that you, if anyone knows Daphne, that, that's actually a huge compliment. <laughs> that she has searched long and far and wide to find the right person. And I can say, knowing Jocelyn for my entire life since they found me in a gutter um, as a child, <laughs> that, that she made sure she found the right person. 
Um, and she waited to make sure it was the perfect day, the perfect time. Um, so again, thank you for coming. Um, cheers to my sister and my new brother. Yeah. Um, our, our Drew Grease doppelganger, Andrew, if you could. Uh, uh, Is Drew Brees a compliment or no? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. So I, I want to start um, a quick thank you. Uh, first, for last night, uh, the Hendricksons. Thank you for everything last night. What an unbelievable way to uh, kick off the, uh, the weekend. So I want to give a toast to uh, the Hendricksons for, for hosting last night. Uh, on, on top of that, on a personal level, you'll hear from my speech, I grew up on the same uh, street as the Hendricksons, and they have been second family to me. Um, Ann and, and Al and, and Carrie, Terry and Lori have been basically second family. Paul mentioned it yesterday. I grew up with one of three brothers, three sisters, and Paul's like the Brady Bunch in a lot of ways. But uh, thank you very much for everything that you've done for me uh, over the course of my life. Uh, thank you to the Oshrins for tonight for uh, hosting tonight. This is an unbelievable venue. Uh, I think everyone knows with the way that the, it's kicked off so far with the second line, this is gonna be a special night. So cheers to the Oshrins. And uh, now your feature presentation. So I wanna walk through how Paul and I know each other. So literally, I have known him my whole life and that is in a literal sense. So our uh, moms were best friends. They're sitting next to each other right now. They were best friends through our pregnancies. So literally when we were born, we grew up on the same street. I've known Paul for 36 years. And over that time, you know, you go through a lot together. We learned how to ride big, big wheels together, drive cars together. Um, we played on the same baseball and basketball team. Uh, we started a business together. Um, we played in a band together. It's unfortunate to know growing up, we considered ourselves Phil Collins enthusiasts, <laughs> but we did. Um, all right. Just say it, Susu Studio, say the word. Just say it and see what happens. Um, so then growing up, uh, age and time did not cause us to separate. Paul went to a different college. Um, I went to a different school. He went to South Bend, yes, by 12. Um, but it didn't cause us to separate. We still have very, very similar interests. We're both in the same field. Uh, we're in med device. We collect vinyl records, we like to play golf, and we still consider ourselves Phil Collins enthusiasts. <laughs> right? One more night. One more night. Uh, now, there were a couple times that this union uh, almost got separated. There was one time when my parents were considering moving uh, from the street that we lived on, and my form of protest was very simple. I fell on the ground, I cried for three hours, I foamed at the mouth, and I was 15 years old at this time. <laughs> 15. Um, another such moment was when my wife Lori and I got married. Um, it was the big reveal, right? So we're taking pictures before. I'm going to see my wife for the first time. Very special, tender moment. And she came down that spiral staircase to see me and Paul waiting for her. <laughs> so the three of us shared that moment. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but that's a true story. She like came down. She's like, "What is Paul doing here?" Um, now. Knowing Paul through the stages, I want to go through a couple fun Paul stages. Uh, Paul the athlete, I'll start with. So Paul's a very gifted athlete, both baseball and basketball. Um, I can't say he was the most serious athlete, nor was I. Um, in one such instance, when we weren't playing so well, the coach said, if you don't want to be here, don't bother showing up to tomorrow. So we didn't. <laughs> we went to the Jimmy Buffett concert instead and showed up to the game with what well, we had a pink flamingo, you know, floaty on. So that was ridiculous, but it's a true story. And then this shows Paul's sense of humor. And um, so another thing, so growing up playing baseball is a big deal when the opposing pitcher would warm up, the whole team would line on the fence and watch the pitcher warm up, right? You'd time your swing, you'd see if he has a curveball, a change up. It was serious business, right? So Paul and I were the battery. I was a catcher, he was a pitcher, and when it was his turn to warm up, the other team would all be on the fence, all right? They'd be watching him get ready to throw his first pitch. Paul would get on the mound, he would grit, he'd grab the ball with his left hand and hurdle it towards the plate. Paul is not left-handed, okay? So, this ball would roll on the ground over the plate. And I'd pick it up and be like, buddy, you can get it here next time. So we were cracking up about that. Um, 
Paul the musician, Paul successfully started the two worst bands in history, baby. Uh, I helped form one of them. Uh, we formed a band in, in high school. Um, we had a unique inability to finish a song. We would start a song and everyone would play and I'd be like, hold, the bassist is done, what do I do? And then the drummer would stop and we'd kind of just peter out songs. So we were terrible. And then uh, in college, he formed a band called Market Zero. Now, this was a little bit more serious band. They played in, in uh, Muncie and actually played Broderpool, some good venues. During this time, Paul took a leap in his musicianship. He became a singer-songwriter. And there was one such song that he wrote that I thought would be you know, good for this occasion. And unbeknownst to him, I thought we could listen to it. Um, I, I wouldn't do that to you. And by you, I mean the audience. I would not have you listen to Paul sing that song at all. So um, moving on, uh, Paul the Entrepreneur. This is a good one. Uh, so Paul and I considered ourselves budding entrepreneurs, tycoons, if you will, of industry. <laughs> We started two businesses together, okay? One at age seven and one at age 33. To show you where this story is going, we made more money as seven-year-olds than we did as 33-year-olds. So we started a business as 33-year-olds, and this business we started, it was basically a pay-to-play giant Jenga. So you put this giant Jenga in a bar, and you'd swipe a credit card, and you'd pay, you'd, you know, you'd pay to play it. That was our business. So. The business was called Keep Gaming. The issue was our customers did not keep gaming, okay? They would play. They'd play once, and then they'd be done with it. And we're like, huh, that's, that's interesting. Um, now, in retrospect, there's two reasons why the business failed. Number one, our customers sucked. It was not our fault. It was their fault. We didn't like them, and they didn't like us. Let's just be clear about that. Um, Number two, Paul and I had the financial discipline of a Saudi prince. We, uh, we, did, we were not very good with the pocketbook, and a great example of this is we would go do what we called market research, okay? So what market research entailed is we would go to a bar and we would watch people play the game, okay? So we'd sit there, we would watch the game grow $6 in revenue, and we'd walk out with an $85 bar tab <laughs> night after night. Now, that's true. Now, with an economic model like this, you would assume that we ceased it pretty quickly, but we had an excuse to go out any night. So we were insolvent in a couple weeks, but we milked that business for a good couple years. So, um, so we, I, we started hanging out with Jocelyn um, when they first started hanging out in South Bend. So I would go up there to see them. They would come down and stay in Indy. And one such night, you know, we were out late, just like you do in your 20s. And it was me and Lori and, and Jocelyn and Paul. We went out late. We were probably out till 2 or 3 in the morning. And we get up the next morning to go get breakfast, probably like 8 o'clock. So we go downstairs. We, we get you know, into the garage to get in my car. Now, to show you the state of mind that we are in at this point, trying to start the car felt like initiating an Apollo mission. I mean, it was looking at turn the key, like, I've got to figure out how this thing's going to happen. So we get the car started and in the instruction manual on how to get your car out of the garage there is one crucial step that we forgot not to do we did not open the garage door <laughs> so the four of us backed directly into the garage crumpled it out we were stuck we could not get out so Paul and I, jumping the occasion, we're like, all right, we'll save our damsels in distress. So we did what every men do when they try to solve a problem. We got a baseball bat and a hammer. <laughs> and that was, our, that was our big scheme to get us out of it. Now, as we're doing this, you know, Jocelyn wit witnessing this buffoonery, you know, relies on her master's degree. She has a more simple, you know, solution. Let's get a Phillips head screwdriver and just undo the bottom two panels. So she saved us from getting out of that. And uh, Jocelyn has a way of, of, of keeping us in line. That's a good example of it. So stories aside, I, I do want to talk about what makes Paul and Jocelyn so special. Um, I'll start with Paul. You know, seeing him develop over 36 years has been incredible. Um, you know, Paul and I are, are very, very committed to personal improvement. Now, we plateaued years ago, all right? But, but we, we were committed to it. Um, in all honesty, you've heard a lot of stories about Paul's sense of humor. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. He, he is caring. He's intelligent. Um, he's got a charismatic personality. Uh, he has the ability to make friends with anyone. Everyone finds comfort standing next to Paul because he's so easy to, 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 to get along with. Um, and it's no surprise that through all this, he's grown a very, very you know, successful career at Medtronic. 
Um, what truly separates Paul, though, of all that is his character. And I don't mean that half-heartedly. So Paul not only knows right and wrong of what it means to be a good person, he is steadfastly disciplined to those values. And, and Paul creates a moral bar that's so high, he pushes those around him to be better people. I know he does me, and I've seen it in a lot of friends. It is, it is something that's very, very unique and no human being I've ever met before. Um, you know, on top of that, Paul knows what's important in life. Uh, he values friends and family above all else. Um, Paul is truly happy for you and your successes. Zero jealousy is truly happy for you and your su successes. And in times of struggle, he's insightful and caring. Um, and, and whether Paul is raising money for a, a family in South Bend he's never met before, or taking his mailman to the Pacer game, Paul truly is an example of what it means to be a good person. Um, now, with a character standard like that, it's no surprise that he chose someone like Jocelyn to spend the rest of his life with. Jocelyn matches Paul in wit, matches Paul in intelligence, and the ability to find fun in everyday life. Um, it, it's a very special thing to see two special people come together, and to see them make each other happy is, is remarkable. They, uh, they have similar interests. They like to travel. Um, it's taken them from Canadian Rockies to uh, St. Lucia, soon to Spain, uh, obviously from Daphne tonight. Who crushed it, by the way? I mean, let's give a toast to Daphne real quick, if we can, <laughs> right? Daphne crushed it. Uh, so they have similar interests. Um, it, it, it is a sp it, it's a beautiful thing when you see two special people come together. Um, w when the union increases the whole and also enriches the lives of everyone around them, it's truly beautiful. And, and Paul and Jocelyn are an example of this. Um, so Paul and Jocelyn, you are truly special to everyone in this room. We are all so excited to see you two happy. Um, I, I want to propose a toast uh, to Paul and Jocelyn, to many, many good years. Cheers to tonight and to many, many, many good years in the future. I love you guys so much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.